Alright, I hope this makes sense to you. If not, I'll try to reshoot it because I really want to pass this on. This is Matthew Preston Vickers Panfish Rig. And uh, it's at least a hundred years old. He was born in 1900 and uh, I suspect far older because he was raised by his grandfather and it's probably what they used on the Willacoochee uh, Georgia rivers for a rig. So it's probably taught to him. His grandfather was born in 1850. Now my Matthew Preston Vickers was a uh, fishing guide in the late 1920s to 1940 on Lake Apopka and uh, I used it between fishing with him my first 20 years and now there's a 42 year gap where I didn't fish any fresh water at all but I use that in salt water just by varying the hook sizes and what I was using a jig on the bottom end where this uh, sinker is. It's a dynamite redfish rig, sheephead, flounder, uh, offshore simply by moving the hook up you can fish for grouper um, and if you if the fish tangles usually you lose the sinker and you keep the fish because excellent feel to it uh, it looks like just a standard dropper, but it is so much more than that. And um, all you need, you don't need a lot of, uh, you don't need to buy a lot of stuff. On the Sheep's Head movie that I shot a few years ago in Florida, uh, you know I was tangling with Freddie, a 10-pound sheep head with the equivalent mustad hook. Now this is a number six eagle claw and a plain shank bronze hook and uh, one time I landed a grouper with nothing more than that so it will land anything from a, a, you know the smallest brim up to that size and it took me a cut I'm not recommending you do that I was out there catching bait and you know hooked that that fish um, but a couple hours later, you know, I got him on board with that little thing. So I know that from brim to any size bass, anything, anything you're going to run across in fresh water, that will do the trick. And in salt water, uh, sheephead, you know, you probably catch a marlin with that thing for all I know. Now, in salt water, here's what you do. You're gonna you're gonna have your main hook tied up here. You're gonna if it's you're looking for flounder or uh, trout or redfish around the rocks. You're gonna be fishing with a yellow jig, and you're gonna clip the hook off here. Up here you've got a shrimp, and uh, the length here you want is 10 inches, eight to 10 inches. If you're in fresh water, we're gonna tie. We're gonna have our split shot down at the bottom. The length here you want, you can catch a uh, shell cracker, bluegill, bass, all with the same rig, not, not varying anything. They'll all bite that. All you need to do is toss it in and let it work. Four to six inches is where you want that in fresh water. All right, let's, let's tie it. All right, my grandfather was a quarter Cherokee Indian, and when uh, his mother died, the new wife uh, rejected the kids, and so he was raised by his grandfather, and that's why I suspect this rig is far older than uh, just his, his age. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to tie a regular fisherman's knot. Now, not in today's world, this is called a clinch knot, fisherman's clinch knot. In his day, it was just a fisherman's knot. So we're going to wrap this around. Now, for bluegill or um, any kind of light fish, four to six turns is all you need. For a heavier fish, you're going to want to come through this islet twice and then, of course, wrap it your eight turns. I'm just going to go right around here. 
through there. We're going to pull that tight. Okay. Now you see how that's sticking straight out? That's what we want when we're fishing. We're, we're just going to stick the This hook should be sticking straight out, just like that. And when you catch a lot of fish on this thing, and you will, uh, it'll tend to, since this is mono, and you get the full feel of it because the, the um, weight is down below the hook, it'll tend to, it'll stretch a little bit. And when this starts to go like that, all you have to do is pull it a little tighter and it'll stick straight out like that again. Okay. Now, down below our hook, freshwater fishing again now, what we're going to do is we're going to tie just a little overhand, little overhand knot. Slide that on down. So down at the bottom, got our hook sticking straight up. We've got our overhand knot, and what we're going to do with that, we're going to put on the smallest split shot that we can get away with for the depth of water we're at, whatever that is, okay? And that will give something for it to clamp, and you can shoot that thing out there, and you won't lose your split shot. All right, okay, you get that idea? You give it, give it some, some meat to hang on to, and no matter how hard you sling it, it will not come off. Okay, so that's the basic rig. If you're going after super big fish, again, through the eye, you want to go double, then tie your regular clinch knot, overhand knot, here at the bottom. Salt water. Let's go to salt water. We're going to do the same thing up here with our hook, with our, you know, whatever size hook we need. That's a grouper size hook for out on the reef. They've got to be circle hooks now. And down on the bottom, we're going we're gonna to put a shrimp up here for our, our bait. Down on the bottom, we're going to clip this off. And we're going to throw it around the oyster bars for a redfish. And, we're, and as you're reeling this in, here's your hook. I'm about hooking myself. Here's your hook. And here is your jig head, and as you're pulling that in, this is down in the murk. You want to feel everything that's down there. This is right up where they'll see it. They'll, they'll be following the cloud of uh, silt that, that your jig head, you know, kicks up. They'll see the shrimp, they'll grab the shrimp, and you got it, okay? If you're on sand, you can have a regular jig head with the hook in it, you know, anything you like. And they can grab either one. But they'll usually go for the shrimp. Even if you have a jig head up here, they'll go for that over the, what, you know, what's being dragged through the mud. Okay. Now let's go to, uh, go to the underwater footage. And I have learned uh, so much from the underwater series. Now, conventional wisdom is that the crappie are out of here at the end of April, certainly by mid-May, and the guys are out on the reservoir fishing in 20 feet of water. And yet, at the end of this, you're going to see one of the biggest crappie you'll ever see in your life. Um, and we're at 8 to 10 feet of water here. Also, I caught a chain pickerel, and I didn't even know we had them here, and I think we've got one of those also pictured uh, just after you see the crop, that, that huge crappie, you'll see, I think, one of those. They look like a cross between an alligator and uh, a normal fish, but they are excellent eating. They are far, far better than a crappie sweet meat, uh, and uh, boy, I was happy to see that turn up. So, anyway, Hope you had a happy Father's Day, and uh, we'll see you next time.